Today, I have the pleasure of introducing you to Meryl Rogue. Hi. A fashion designer who has recently started showing at Paris Fashion Week. While speaking to Meryl in her first interview, I realized that she's in such a unique position in her work and in her business to provide crucial insight on the process of starting a brand. When I spoke to Meryl, she had just finished presenting her fourth collection and begun work on the fifth, which she is showing later this week in Paris. She went to school at the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Antwerp, then worked at Marc Jacobs for seven years and Dries Van Noten for four years before launching her own brand. We talk about how she starts a collection, her process from idea to lookbook, and the Herculean effort that it takes to strike out independently. This is how to start a brand with Meryl Rogue. What is the, the full process of design like for your specific brand? I find it's different for everybody. Um, from like the idea to the hanger or the, the lookbook shoot or whatever, what, what is the full process that y'all go through? I mean, it definitely starts with fabrics, as I said. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we not only do we go to, of course, the fa fa fabric fairs, although I didn't have time this season to so send a friend mm -hmm. to go and make the selection oh, wow. for me. Um, and, um, you know, you start and you just touch a lot of things and see a lot of things. And actually, when I didn't have uh, my own collection, it was the most important thing was to do nothing for two weeks. I mean, you're in the office, you come in, you do, you do some tidying up and you really, it's kind of like a, I don't know, it's not a cleansing process, but you kind of have to get out of the, the previous season. Mm -hmm. And so you walk around. I mean, when I was in New York, we used to like, just go uptown mm. and just like walk around and go to an exhibition or, mm. you know, go, go to Prada, whatever, mm -hmm. just to get some new senses. And, mm -hmm. and it really helps to, to kind of shift your uh, thought into the next. Mm. But to be honest, the, the impulses already come at the end of the previous one. I already was thinking about, okay, what should we do for fall? Just because, you know, it's... Mm -hmm. It's an intuitive thing and it comes naturally and you kind of, you know, you're done with one and you want to you wanna move on. So this is how it really starts with like little seeds planted and then usually the things that you're already thinking about very early on mm -hmm. or even before the season are the things that are going to work out in the end. I mean, I find. Mm -hmm. I feel like when, it's when you're forcing yourself to create things because you have to create whatever. Yeah. Uh, that's when that, it gets really... That's when it gets a little bit. But when it goes naturally... It, I mean, it's not easy. It's, it's, you know, creation is very hard, I think, in every of course. You know, music and, and everything. Anyway, start with the seed ID, then fabrics and seeing around and, you know, looking around yourself. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then you really have to start doing stuff. In our case, sometimes we look at vintage mm -hmm. and we try to create something else from it. Or sometimes it just comes from the mind and you, you sketch something and then you work with a pattern maker to develop a, a pattern. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, you order your fabrics. Um, and develop those. So it, it really goes hand by hand. And then you try the, the fabrics that arrive in the patterns that you've made. Oh. You see if it works or if it doesn't work. So it's really, um, it's like a six month process. Mm -hmm. um, and then you start to really think, once you really started designing a couple of garments, you start, okay, what is, what is the look? What, like, what do we want to go for? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you start to fill up the holes. For like, I think we need this, I think we need this. So. Um, it's a very gradual and natural process and things mm. evolve. And, um, and at the end, you, you, know, you think of who is the girl or the guy who, want, who should represent this collection. And you start doing casting and looking at different people who could, you, know, you could shoot mm -hmm. in the lookbook. Um, and you start thinking about photographers who could bring you know, the right vibe. I mean, there's several collections that I've done in the past that were totally not based on garments that were more about ideas or, you know, specific visuals. And then you, you, work, uh, you work around that. But now I feel much more inspired to work with starting garments. Mm -hmm. you, you work from vintage or from an existing thing mm -hmm. and you deconstruct it or... But maybe in a couple of years, it's going to be something else. So. Yeah. From just like a, a personal satisfaction standpoint, like what, what is the piece that you've made that you really love wearing? I mean, it's um, a nylon coat from the first season, mm -hmm. has jewel buttons, and it's this nylon, which is a Japanese nylon, mm -hmm. which I'm obsessed with, mm -hmm. and I've been using it four seasons in a row, mm -hmm. and literally, it's the piece that sells the least, but love I don't it. care. But you love it. But I love it. Yeah. I mean, the, the fabric is so amazing. It's a nylon that's basically uh, woven on those old denim looms mm -hmm. that Japanese people have purchased in right. the States uh, back yeah. in the days. 
And so they weave oh, it on their, this. Their U.S. looms that yeah. all now live. I've heard that, yeah, that a lot yeah. of our looms have all been bought up and yeah. that none of them are in the Those States anymore. Yeah, no, exactly. And then, great. So this is the first piece. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, so th this is uh, the nylon uh, code version of the jacket that I was referring to uh, in our conversation. Um, this is a piece from the first season uh, where we really uh, wanted to make this like gigantic oversized version of this like classic nylon hmm. jacket. Yeah. Uh, so it became a coat. The touch of it is amazing and um, it's padded on, in, on the inside with a, so it's black on the outside and it's white silk mm -hmm. twill on the inside and it's, it's very soft and cozy and Beautiful. it's padded. So this is a piece that I really enjoy to wear. The inside is like a, a quilted charmeuse silk mm. lining, so it's extremely comfortable. Mm. And we have the covered buttons, which are made out of nylon, and the, um, the placket of grow grain. And it comes with a matching scarf, which is like a hood scarf, which is completely detachable. Um, and then, of course, you have the jewel button, which finishes it completely so um, beautiful and then I have the version in black uh, which also comes with the gold button so it's mm. like a casual evening weird hybrid mm. piece, which we always do we always have these like weird hybrid situations it's massive I love it it is massive during my research I was really pleased to see how much emphasis you put on materials and textiles what are what are some textile things that get you really excited what do you really love working with the, the foundation of the, like wanting to create this brand is my passion for fabrics mm -hmm. for sure when I was at other brands mm -hmm. um, you know you're always a bit restricted and so mm -hmm. that first season when I got to choose my own fabrics without having to report to anyone. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely went, I didn't go wild, but I just really went for the things that I really wanted to use for a long mm -hmm. time. Tell me about it, yeah. So this is uh, a piece from our first collection. It's uh, called the Glove Boa. Mm. And it caused quite a stir on the internet mm -hmm. because Nordstrom had it online. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was styled in a way that the, the gloves really came out. Mm. And uh, there, I think there were like 1,500 or 10,000 views a minute on wow. that item because there were so many funny comments <laughs> about this, like, I mean, it went from like the butcher to the killer to the, I mean, you name it, it was in there. And it, it, we, had, we had so much fun reading all those comments. Yeah. And it was like 20 pages of like comments <laughs> under the product page. So, I mean, that was quite funny. That's awesome. And it was picked up by all those like, you know, meme, meme what, pages. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but anyways, we still think it's a cool piece. Uh, it's like a hybrid between a glove and a boa. So. Yeah. And it's in the double duchess satin that we just mentioned. So Yeah, that's so beautiful. Um, yeah. And so this double duchess, which is from Italy, which is, is from this amazing company, which is actually like 90 centimeters wide, where wow. usually it's like 1 meter 40. Mm -hmm. So the consumption is much higher. So not only is the price of the fabric way higher than another but, then, but the, I mean you cannot you cannot replicate this with another composition mm -hmm. it's impossible like mm -hmm. the color the shine mm -hmm. the texture yeah. no it's amazing it's yeah. like yeah I, I can't describe it's impossible to describe um, I'm sure but uh, but yeah so that, you know that was my my little letting go of the first season but um, no every season we use quite interesting fabrics I, I think and quite noble things too I think it's important that, um, I mean, th the aim of the brand is really to create pieces that stand uh, in the wardrobe, wardrobe for a long, um, a long period of time, mm -hmm. uh, even if they're fashion or whatever, you know, it doesn't matter, but that really exists in someone's, like a little, you know, collector's item that someone mm -hmm. is not going to get rid or put on Vestiaire Collective the next season, mm -hmm. basically. That's the aim of the brand. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you cannot control the outcome, of course. Of course. Um, but so, and I think that starts with it, you know, if you work with a beautiful, noble material, mm -hmm. that goes a long way and you can have a very simple shape and, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to have this magic on its own. So mm -hmm. it definitely helps to work with beautiful materials. What, why, why did you pick Duchess satin for this, this specific piece? I mean, because it's kind of like ironic, you know, you, you use this classic mm -hmm. couture, type of fabric and you pair it with like these garden type gloves and mm -hmm. you make a bow out of it. I mean, it's kind of this, um, again, this hybrid kind of thing yeah. that we really like to design these type of items. Yeah. Um, but I guess it's a little bit our surrealistic Belgian heritage mm -hmm. that seeps in unconsciously. I don't know. Mm. So yeah, it's beautiful. There go. Yeah. But yeah, it's definitely the foundation of what we do is uh, material research and also, you know, the, all the prints we design 
uh, with uh, our, our team. Mm -hmm. So um, everything is quite personal. Mm. What was it like transitioning from being on a team of designers designing for someone else's vision to having your own label and bringing your own vision in? It's a different thing, but at the same time, I felt like in my other jobs, I acted, I've always acted as if it were my own brand mm. in terms of responsibility. Mm. So I don't really feel like a lot. I mean, obviously, a lot has changed. And obviously, now I'm wearing so many more hats mm -hmm. before it was only design. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you got to do everything. Now. So now I have to do the production <laughs> and, you know, a bunch of other things that you would never think of. Yeah. Um, but luckily, I'm not alone to do this. But, uh, and, you know, we, we've, been getting a lot of help from friends and family. My, both my parents work. Mm. Uh, my brother jo joined the company as our CFO recently. Oh, that's right. So great. there's like uh, people doing different things for sure mm -hmm. uh, that help out. But yeah, but I'm still doing a lot of different things that I haven't done. <laughs> but I have to say, wearing all these different hats, it leaves very little time for the actual design process. Whereas mm. before it was my 100%, now it's maybe my 5%. Yeah. So that's really... Because there is so um, much to do. Yeah, exactly. That's so I mean, just production alone takes me three months to do. Mm -hmm. So if you count, then... So I started now, so it's like October, November, December. So then I have two months to make a collection figure of speech. Right. I mean, you try to slot it in, but basically that's what it is. Wow. Um, but I'm trying, I'm trying to get some help with production now, so hmm. hopefully this uh, all works out. And, uh, it will. Yeah. yeah you'll, you'll figure it out. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I, I've, I've talked to a lot of designers where they've said that the, the bookkeeping side of the industry, the side, not the industry, the bookkeeping side of running a company is the part that they absolutely loathe and that they were the most eager to find a CFO. Oh. And yeah. then they encounter this problem where they find a C, CFO and then the CFO wants to cut out all these things that are important to the yeah, process that's and stuff. But you found a great solution to that because your brother, I assume, is great with this stuff. And, right. Well, and he I understands mean, your vision at least somewhat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. I mean, it's um, you know, we're still in the beginning stages of this whole thing, and uh, but he's cleaned up our finances pretty well, so he's mm. been amazing. Um, but my my mother does like she's an accounts payable. Oh, cool. So she takes care and she like prepares everything for the accountant, and then my father does like all different kind of things like logistics mm. i mean you name it like all the shipping at the end of the season like towards all the customers like the clients i mean it's insane uh -huh. you i mean until you see it you don't realize how crazy it is actually. and your whole family just jumped in to help yeah so i've been very lucky in the sense that they had all this time to devote mm. to the start of this brand um and um, and I'm very lucky also to have a brother that wants to do it after his day job. So mm. um, so yeah, so it's still very, and then also very lucky to have a lot of friends and um, acquaintances who've helped out in those first seasons. Mm. I mean, most of the time for you know a small piece of chocolate. You know, <laughs> I mean, so it's really I mean been super lucky. Um, mm -hmm. And now we're, you know, we're getting a professional company, but the yeah. beginning was quite... Uh, it can be chaotic. I think it's chaotic for yeah. everybody. I mean, you just get to learn all this stuff that you've never done before. That's so cool. Um, this was wonderful. Thank you so well, much. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for your research. And Yeah. Um, I mean, it was a pleasure. This is, and your, your work is incredible. It's so beautiful. This is... Thanks. That's very kind. Exciting stuff. It's yeah. a team effort for sure. Very cool. I mean, it always is, right? There's yes. there's no fashion designer out yeah. there like making the clothes exactly. themselves. No, I mean, there are, but uh, that's not my case. So. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> cool. Thank you.